So this is Steve, and I'm here with Martin Fisher, who is the Executive Director of Science Central. Yes. Uh, do I have the right title? You do, yeah. Great. Uh, we're here at Science Central, and you're doing a competition today. Tell me a little bit about what's going on. Sure, it's a very exciting event. It's called the Catapult Competition, what we call Catapult Chaos. We have a series of catapults, and it's a particular design. All right, here's the science word for today, the engineering word for today. There are many different types or designs of catapults, and this particular type that it looks like most of them today have is called a trebuchet. But basically, it's a catapult. It's a way to have a hinge mechanism that takes object and moves it from point A to point B. So we have a series of four catapults that are enrolled in our competition today. And what they're doing is they're going for accuracy. We have a series of concentric rings that are set up, painted on the ground on the opposite end of the field, and some poles with the target that they're aiming for. They're taking five pound bags of flour, placing them inside of their catapult, and then trying to launch it with accuracy, taking into account the wind that's here, and try to get to their target on time. good object size wise and shape wise most of the time they stay together occasionally there will be a misfire and it might break in the air as it's arcing across the sky leading a powder trail behind it but what we really like is when it hits the ground you get that plume of smoke and it's easy for the judges to be able to see where that launch was in relation to the target okay. how many years have you done this now Oh, let's see, is this the fourth year? It might be the fifth. I think it's the fourth year that we've done it. And we hold it right here in the park, directly south of Science Central's parking lot. So it's easy for our competitors to come into our parking lot with their pickup truck, flatbed, unload their equipment, set it up here in the field, and then get it ready for the competition. And there's, there's all sorts of ages and everything, and it looks like we're getting ready to shoot, so we're gonna kind of watch them, and you're gonna walk us through kind of our Give us a little bit of background about what they're doing. All right, I can certainly do that. As the camera spins around, you can see the open field, and it ha and the area where the catapults are located is marked off with the flags on the ground. Now, those flags are there for a very important reason. That's the danger zone. So any of the teams that are going through a firing, they obviously make sure to wear their safety equipment. You can see all of those competitors are wearing their safety hats. And the judges are also wearing safety hats. But then everybody moves away from that danger area, certainly in front. And this may surprise people, but even directly behind the catapult, that's also a danger zone. So the person that's pulling the firing mechanism, they're off to the side. They pull the string to launch it, but they're not directly behind the catapult because it is possible that there can be a misfire. And instead of the uh, projectile going forward, it could either stay in the basket or, even worse, go backwards and strike the ground directly behind. So our five pound bags of flour are arcing across the sky and I'll tell you that second one made it very close to the target. You might have noticed that there were powder trails around the targets over there on the ground and you can see that yes, yeah, some of them are really close to the target looks like one of them, the closest that I can see from my vantage point, it looks like there's one that's maybe about three feet away, and the others range from, it looks like, about 10 feet all the way to about 20 feet away from the target. Now, they'll do, the, they'll do actually how many rounds of, of the actual firing for the competition? We had the team start off with three practice rounds, and that allows them to go ahead and modify their weights. In fact, you can see one of the teams is adjusting one of their weights right now. They decided to go ahead and alter either, looks like they were putting on more. And they've got a, that particular team has a very different design to their catapult and they are using a trebuchet. One of the ways that you can tell that it's a trebuchet is that it uses a counterweight mechanism to help fling the item and it also has a basket where the object that's getting propelled will be launched. And that's one of the ways that you can tell a trebuchet. Trebuchets, quite frankly, tend to be the type of catapult that usually get involved in these competitions. So we allow the teams <clears throat> to go ahead and do three practice runs. They alter the weights, they'll make some adjustments on the tension and the pressure, and then they go into the competitions themselves. We have everything in our um, 
participant list today from professional engineers all the way to, we've got a high school group that's here. One of the new tech high school groups enrolled their catapult for the second year in a row. Now I definitely have to say that this couldn't have occurred, this event couldn't have occurred without our wonderful partners, partners Fort Wayne Metals. Thanks to the sponsorship of Fort Wayne Metals, who is the sponsor for our catapult competition, we're able to go ahead and provide this activity for our visitors and for the attendees of the Three Rivers Festival. And we're getting ready to have a launch. So you can see they're standing well back of the danger zone. They pull the trigger. It releases the pressure. The catapult launches that object about halfway across the field. So that's a bit of a distance. Now with our competition, I said we were going for accuracy rather than some of the competitions which exist out there where they're just going for distance. And of course, when you're dealing with a distance competition, the trebuchets tend to get taller and taller with heavier and heavier counterweights. So it's a really good event. We've had great participation. The teams have been coming back year after year. They love it. We have a great crew of people that are watching it along the sidelines. Fortunately, we're lucky that we don't have blazing sun today. There's a bit of shade because of the clouds and also with the trees that we have scattered around the park. So the people that are watching are having a great time, really enjoying it. And they tend to stay from the beginning setup all the way through the end when we give out the awards. And I should point out that after the competition itself is over, that's when we have some fun and we break out the watermelons and the cantaloupe and unleash the fury and the mess. So now these, these machines actually served a purpose. They did. Way, way back when. Yeah, catapults have been around for thousands of years. They're probably most well known as a siege weapon. Siege weapon for um, storming a castle, say, during the, the Middle Ages. But they've actually been around much longer than that. Romans uh, were using various forms of, of catapults. So they've been around for a very long time because, quite frankly, they're effective. And even for people that are watching this, maybe they, they're fans of Lord of the Rings. You've, you've seen those movies and during the siege of one of those castles, what are they using? Large catapults. There's a reason why they've been around for so long. Now, obviously with modern technology, let's be realistic, an aircraft carrier with, um, with planes or um, a ship that has Scud missiles that can send it you know, from a submarine 1,500 miles away, much more effective at, at a siege than these medieval weapons. But, but they were very effective and they lasted for thousands of years. But where's the fun in the modern stuff? It's not yeah, as there as we go, funny. there we go. <laughs> it's like they're queuing up for round two. It looks three. like it. It's yeah. like they're getting ready for the next round here. It looks like it. Now the person that's all the way in the front, that's one of our judges. We have a couple of judges that are here. They're very familiar with catapult design the rules of our competition and quite frankly they did a lot of research about other types of catapult competitions that go on around the country. We had to customize it of course for our particular event here in Fort Wayne and at Science Central. We wanted to make sure that it's visual which is why we came up with the idea of bags of flour. We want to make sure that it's safe. So even for example if you take a look behind the catapults there's nobody back there and we've even tried parking the cars far away from where the launch site is. Safety is paramount for what we're doing here. So in typical Science Central style, we're making it fun and interactive. We've got team activities going on where each team has to work together. It's very visual. It relates to science education and it's fun. And it looks like that last team is putting on weights again? They are. It looks like they're soon doing, once again, they're doing some adjustments, adjustments to their particular unit. And if you take a look, as I said, their design, their type of, uh, of trebuchet is much different from the others. It has a sliding mechanism along the bottom in addition to just the counterweight. And their counterweights you can see are on the top, whereas the others are underneath at the bottom of the lever. See, so yeah, that's basic physics right there. The catapults are just using that you know, most famous simple machine, the lever. Think about a teeter-totter, for example. Now, is, are any of these teams, uh, were they a winner last year? 
Oh, I don't remember. Let's see. We do have a couple of repeat teams. And as to which, I can't remember which ones won last year. So I certainly hope that they'll come back next year. And anybody that's watching this, if they're a tinkerer, if they're a builder, if they like construction, if they like engineering and tools, I would certainly recommend give it a shot, pun intended. Give it a shot. Go ahead and try to build one at home. Practice over the next year. Get some of your friends to go ahead and help out so it does become a team effort and you'd be able to work with each other. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter what gender you are. Anybody can go ahead and learn, get involved, and have fun with an event such as this. And there they go. One of them really had some height. And they overshot a little bit, but that's okay. And you've got room for more than four teams? Yes, we do, yeah. We, in fact, we could probably easily double it. I would, oh, I would say maybe have three times as many teams just taking a look at the field. And of course, we can rearrange however we need to be able to add on more teams, to have more spectators go ahead and watch this. The more the merrier. Well, Martin, we're going to cut you loose. We appreciate your time today. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for coming today.